is John Paul Rye. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. What you're looking at here is the declaration of Jennifer Howell. Now, Jennifer Howell has recently been coming out saying things about Amber Heard and Whitney Heard vouching that, well, those two weren't so great in the past. Now, I say Whitney Heard because they've been calling her in the trial Whitney Henriquez. And honestly, I stumble when I say that. Hernandez, Henriquez, I confuse it. And I think you're supposed to confuse it. And Adam Waldman, Johnny's lawyer, has been calling her Whitney Heard. We want to keep it simple. And we want everybody to know clearly that that's Amber's sister. So from this point on, I'm calling her Whitney Heard. Okay, so let's get into this declaration and a bit more on Jennifer Howell. By the way, Adam Waldman scanned this in from his phone, so for some reason, it's like slightly crooked. I think that's on his end. She starts, I, Jennifer Howell, declare as follows. And I really like this lady because her English is good. She writes neatly and properly, and she seems like she's really serious. There's no name calling. There's nothing. It's just flat out information. And it, to me, it seems truthful. Number one, I am over the age of 18 and not a party to this action. I have firsthand personal knowledge of the facts set forth below and if called as a witness could completely testify there too. Whitney Henriquez, whose maiden name was Whitney Heard, is my dear friend. She has told me that I am her chosen sister. I also call her my chosen sister, which is kind of interesting when you think about it because Amber is Whitney's sister, so is Whitney trying to get a new sister? Number three, Whitney worked for me at a nonprofit organization that I founded 22 years ago and run called The Art of Elstium. We take artists and help them be of service to communities in need. We serve over 30,000 individuals in need each year. Whitney volunteered for the organization in 2014 for about six months and she worked full time as a paid employee for me in 2015 to 2016 where Whitney served as art salon manager slash director and the other great thing is this woman is no bum you know she's not like Io Tillett who's you know kinda of goofing around doing whatever she's a respectable person number four I have learned that Whitney testified in court July 23rd in London about a violent incident in March 2015 on the stairs at Johnny Depp's penthouse she testified that Johnny supposedly hit Amber and Whitney on the stairs at Johnny's downtown penthouse. Then Whitney said she had to go to live with her employer where she had to sleep on their floor. I am that employer. This is not what I was told to be true. First, Whitney came to live in the guest room of my apartment on Wilshire Boulevard, not on my floor, but in my guest room. Okay, little white lie, little exaggeration, but still, you could tell they're making things up. Second, when Whitney arrived, she was a mess. Whitney told me she tried to stop her sister Amber from hitting and attacking Johnny on the stairs, which is the opposite of what Amber said. Whitney said when she tried to intervene to stop Amber from going after Johnny, Amber nearly pushed Whitney down the stairs, which is pretty much the opposite of what Amber said. She told me she was worried Amber was going to kill Johnny. She told me she had endured that kind of abuse her entire life from her father and then from Amber, who she said was extremely violent. And as we know, Amber was pretty close to her father, and her father was a pretty violent guy. He threatened to shoot Johnny Depp, actually. I've got a video on that a couple of months back. It wasn't a direct threat. He used some kind of phrase, some kind of, like, Texas saying or something like that. But, you know, the point was... In so many words, joking or not, he said that she lived with me because she did not feel she could go back to live at the Eastern Columbia building. My father reminded me this morning that I told him that Whitney had moved in with me because she was terrified of her sister. So Whitney was terrified of Amber. So it seems like Amber just goes through her life and abuses whoever she feels like it and then she dates somebody for security and to get as much as possible from them. That's my little guess. Number five, while Whitney was living with me, 
She told me Johnny kept checking in to see how she was doing and that he called her sis and that she claimed him brother. Whitney said to me on multiple occasions that she did not know why he was staying in the relationship nor why he was putting up with Amber's abuse. Whitney shared with me the damage endured by both her and Amber's children and the injuries she had suffered from Amber both physiologically and physically. Whitney was devastated during this time and my heart broke for her. Now it makes me wonder if I played devil's advocate for one second here and I hate to do this however it makes me wonder if she did suffer so much abuse from Amber why is she on Amber's side to testify totally for Amber right now. One side of me says alright you know Maybe this is exaggerated, but the other side of me says, maybe she's scared of Amber. Maybe she just does whatever Amber says, and she's so scared of her that she feels if she doesn't do everything she can to help Amber in this case, that Amber will come for her again. Number six, when Whitney came back from New York, I believe it was for Tribeca Film Festival, the Adderall Diaries, Premiere or both, she shared with me and everyone in the office that Amber freaked out attacking Whitney and threw a wine glass full of red wine at her in the elevator. Sounds kind of familiar. Throwing a wine glass, throwing a vodka bottle, just throwing stuff in general. Sounds like Amber. 7. While Amber and Johnny were in Australia, Whitney was in the office sitting in the black and white chairs near the kitchen and loudly proclaimed, Oh my God, she has done it now. She has cut off his fucking finger. So now, Jennifer Howell heard in real time Whitney hearing the news that Amber did in fact throw the vodka bottle which severed the tip of Johnny's finger. So here she gets into Elon Musk and the frozen embryos and the Tesla that Amber Heard was gifted. Some people rightfully were skeptical about the frozen embryos but I think as you guys could see that this woman here Jennifer Howell is not a gossiper. She doesn't seem like somebody who makes up shit fake rumors at random. So I gotta think that there's a good chance that there were frozen embryos. Number eight, I knew Paige heard Amber and Whitney's mother. Paige shared with me while I was visiting Whitney that Elon Musk had gifted a Tesla or multiple Teslas, not sure if it was one or more, but Amber found out that they were bugged. Paige told me that Amber said Elon was controlling, abusive, and that she was in a legal battle with him over the rights to the embryos that they had created together. He wanted to destroy them and Amber tried to keep them to have a baby. Makes sense to me. Elon Musk has five or seven or four babies with other women, whatever the hell it is, and Amber just wants to be connected probably to one of the richest men in the world and have a baby with him. So if there was the frozen embryo thing, it would make perfect sense that Elon Musk would want it gone and Amber Heard would want to keep it. Paige told me that Johnny was either an angel or a saint compared to Elon. And she wished that Amber and Johnny would reconcile. Paige also told me the reason Johnny and Amber broke up was because Amber was violent and emotional and loved Johnny so much that she could not control it. I was indeed taken aback because this conversation occurred after the divorce and when Hunter was only a few months old and I was at Whitney's house. Whitney told me that Amber and Johnny were still in touch and that they were each other's true loves or something to that exact sediment. Whitney was still going through the emotions of having had a baby and all those ups and downs and I could not believe that Amber and Johnny's relationship was being discussed while Whitney was the one who needed to be the focal point and needed our support. Number 9. When Amber got into legal trouble regarding smuggling the dog into Australia, she asked me to write her a character reference about her charity work and I did so. Now, as you guys can see, Jennifer Howell seems to know about everything. You know, she's very concisely writing in detail about all these events we've been hearing about that Amber's been talking about and Whitney Heard has been talking about. And it seems like, wait a minute, it seems like Jennifer Howell remembers these things a lot more clearly than the Heard sisters do. Maybe because Howell's just telling it as she sees it, or saw it, my mistake. And the Hurt sisters are making up a bunch of shit as they go along and changing all the time and they can't keep track of it. That would make sense to me. We had given her a humanitarian award. 
She volunteered with the charity and attended events for the charity. I am still grateful for that. I knew nothing about her personal life behind closed doors until I became close to Whitney. Number 10. When Amber was in trouble with the Australian authorities, she asked me to write a character letter in support of her, which I did. I wrote on behalf of Amber for her volunteering with the charity. So I guess to some extent Amber did actually volunteer with the charity and not just go there only to show face. I guess, you know, she must have put in some hours that were simply beyond showing up for the cameras. Because like I said, I'm taking Howell's word for what she says for the most part at this point. Number 11. Later when Amber and Johnny were divorcing, 7 million of the proceeds was supposed to go to charity. I learned that none of it would be directed to the art of Elsium, which Amber had been closely associated with for years. Instead, I understood it would go all to A, C, L, U, and L, A Children's Hospital. I asked Amber's publicist why, when she and Amber had been so eager to use our name in the press during the divorce, and when the funds would mean so much to a small organization like ours, would Amber direct all the money to those other two huge charities that she had not been associated with? Well... It could be that Howell is slightly bitter, but that doesn't take away from the fact that she's remembering everything very clearly, with detail, and writing it all nice and neat. And that's just my speculation. But just saying, the other side would be able to use that against Howell if they came at that angle. Amber's publicist told me that they were more prominent charities with a more significant press reach and got international press. Then, months later, a $250,000 donation came into our organization from an anonymous donor on behalf of Amber Heard. The funds did not come from Amber. I believed this donation came from Elon, who was giving all kind of shit to Amber and covering for her and stuff like that, so that probably makes sense. Number 12. Years later, on July 24th, 2020, I received two subpoenas from Johnny's attorney after Whitney testified about sleeping on my floor following the stairs incident. The following day, I spoke with Johnny's attorney, Adam Waldman, for the first time, and obviously, she sent him this, and obviously, he made this public. And I think the reason he's doing that is to sped it around, like I have it now, like you guys are hearing it now. Let's get all the facts correct in everybody's head before the case starts. I told him the stories of my experiences with Whitney, Paige, and Amber Heard, and he asked me to give this declaration. I shared the names of the art of Elsium staff who worked during the same time as Whitney who also heard these things and more and willingly gave access to my emails, texts to confirm dates and timeline of all stated. Executed this 26th day of July 2020 in Los Angeles. Now here's what I really like. I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America and Commonwealth of Virginia that the foregoing is true and correct. So she's saying, if anything I'm saying here is found to be a lie, then go ahead and penalize me. So she seems pretty fucking confident here that everything she's saying is true. And like I said, it sounds true. It doesn't sound like somebody who's just kind of writing a statement for Johnny because she likes Johnny and she thinks Johnny's a good guy and she met Johnny and they had a couple of drinks together or something like that. It seems like she really wants the truth out and she is going in detail and it seems like she knows what she's talking about. If they get up on the stand, I think she's going to do a fantastic job. Anyway, you guys, of course, let me know what you think down below. Having kind of a hectic weekend, so I didn't put together a fancy slideshow here, but I felt that the mood of this declaration was kind of good for just a straightforward text-based slideshow. Anyway, quick word on the channel. Next week, I'll be getting up more pop culture, Ricky Gervais, things like that. But for now, while time's tight, I'm sticking to one Johnny video a day. I also have a request from a patron, Stovetop Ninja, about the Knight Rider TV show coming up, and we will have a video on that. Consider subscribing, you'll see all that stuff. If you don't subscribe, well, I'll be pretty sad, but I'll get over it. 
See you next time.